Assalamu alaikum. Welcome everybody for all those who joined us today. Uh, it's a pleasure to have everybody with us. We've got uh, the topic that we want to discuss today is first job, startup or a business. How to shine during lockdown. I think it's one of the most pertinent of topics in terms of when we look at the situation around us, when we look at uh, you know, what is happening. I will be your moderator for the today. For today, my name is Farhan Ahmed, and I am a I am a very proud alumni of IOPM. I graduated back in 1999, and currently I work with Standard Chartered Bank as the head of external communications for Pakistan. We have lined up a very uh, you know a, 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 a host of really elite speakers who will enlighten you and talk to you about the different aspects. So what we've do, done is that we've tried. Uh, to have speakers who will not only talk to you about the, the, the organizational hiring or the organizational structuring of things, but also people who are well placed on in the entrepreneurial side of business and are and have uh, developed businesses of their own and have done very well in that as well. So we want to give you as a holistic view in terms of how to shape and how to structure your careers as we possibly can. So uh, with that, I would like to just. Uh, uh, you know, start off with a little thing that how we how we'll structure the session today is that we will keep uh, we will start off with an opening session, which would be uh, by one of our distinguished speakers. Then we will have a small panel discussion, and which which will be followed by a guest speaker who will be speaking at the end. So to introduce our uh, opening dialogue speaker for today. He is, he is a very experienced HR professional who has been in the field very, for a very long time. He's worked with the top 100 uh, MNCs, uh, amongst, uh, amongst them being 
in Unilever. He's worked with PNG, with 3M, Pfizer. He is currently the CEO People and Business Partnering uh, for, for People and Business Partnering. His name is Mr. Ahmed Alizia, and uh, he brings with him a huge experience of senior roles in HR and supply chain and is currently with the HRS group. And he also holds a, a level seven CIPD certification in HR and ER with the distinction from the Chartered Institute of Personal Development, UK. And he's also, a, he's also certified in corporate governance by the Pakistan Institute of Corporate Governance and also has a bachelor's degree from NED. So we're very happy and we're very delighted to have Emmett uh, deliver uh, uh, the opening address and, and talk to everybody today. So with that, Emma, if I can request you to please take the floor and uh, let's start. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Farhan. Uh, Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Assalamu alaikum and a very good evening, uh, a weekend evening actually. So I'm, uh, I'm glad you were all able to find time to join us uh, for this session. Uh, can you all hear me? Farhan, can you hear me properly? Yes, we can hear you. We can we hear you loud and clear. Thank you. Uh, Farhan, can you hear me? Your mic is muted, Farhan. Yes, I can hear you. Ahmed. We can hear you. Can you hear us? Okay. Ahmed, we can hear you. Okay, can you perfect. hear me? So again, Please. thank you very thank much. You. And uh, as I said, yes. Uh, and I'm humbled to again join this very August forum where we have some very distinguished and experienced panelists. And I'm also thankful to Farhan for a very, very humbling uh, introduction of myself. Uh, so uh, just to add a little bit on that before I share uh, my perspective on the topic that we are going to talk about today. Uh, I was lucky to start up my career as an engineer with some of the top companies in the world. That was 30 years back. So the context and the environment was very different. But uh, I think I was lucky to gain the startup experience very early on in my career. So for the first more or less 10 years, I worked for several startups, including those of PNG and 3M, and then later on for KFC, uh, and then a huge transformation project for one of the big pharmaceutical companies. So those learnings that I was uh, able to gather in the first 10 years of my life, uh, professional life, have really helped me uh, navigate through uh, the later two decades of my career. And, um, and, and I'm, I'm going to try and share those experiences and observations and also try to answer if you have any questions, which can, uh, you know, if I can help you with uh, your upcoming, uh, inshallah, uh, experiences and adventures. Um, and what I'll try to do in the next 10, 15 minutes is to share with you some uh, slides, some, again, some of my observations and experiences over the last uh, few years, especially because as I said, today's context and environment and challenges are entirely different uh, than uh, what, let's say, I faced some three decades ago. So I'm going to talk about some of the experiences and challenges and observations and try to kind of open up new avenues of thinking for yourself as well as for the panelists so that we can take the discussion forward and you find today's uh, uh, dialogue useful. Uh, so with that, uh, I'm going to open up uh, uh, a few slides and Farhan, uh, can I do that? Yes, absolutely. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes, now? we can see your screen. Okay, great. So this is the topic uh, I was asked to uh, talk about. Uh, and before we start, as all of us know that uh, uh, while the world was already going through a lot of change, it was suddenly hit by the tsunami of the sea. That's what I call it, which is the COVID, uh, resulting in sudden lockdown, uh, actually global economic shutdown, and now the world is slowly opening up. 
uh, we are still navigating through uncharted territories. And uh, as one of my uh, colleagues says, is that the tsunami, while the tsunami is settling, we will only get to know the real impact of it when the uh, tsunami has completely settled. So the next two, three months are going to actually be very, very important in terms of uh, the economy, in terms of the social impact of uh, the, uh, the great uh, disturbance that uh, we have faced over the last uh, three, four months. Uh, so we are still uh, navigating through those uh, uh, um, times. And this has resulted in unforecasted and completely unexpected dips in sales and profits for a lot of companies, which has uh, uh, kind of uh, forced them to uh, look at their P&Ls differently, to look at their strategies, to revisit their business plans in a very different, with a very different perspective. This is also in many cases, and yesterday I was reading just in Pakistan, we are going to be, uh, we should be expecting job losses to the tune of 3 million, which is a huge figure given the economy and given the dynamics that we operate in. A lot of companies have still been able to, uh, you know, stop the job losses at this point in time and are managing through salary cuts, through some furloughs, which are, uh, which is a new concept, which is like sending people on leave without pay. And in some cases, a few rationalization efforts and uh, reducing the number. Uh, we are now working in a very different environment uh, where uh, social distancing, remote working, virtual meetings like today's and virtual learning platforms are redefining our, uh, uh, our professional and personal behaviors actually. And this is a big change that everyone is trying to grapple with. Uh, the biggest agenda on uh, the uh, for the organizations as well as for the educational institutions going forward will be human safety, how well they're going to be able to take care of the health of their employees as the world opens up, uh, how agile we can become, uh, how do we engage employees through virtual uh, engagement, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So again, the priority, so for those companies which rarely used to talk about these things. Uh, this has thrown a very different challenge on them and they are now forced to talk about things like human safety, healthcare, et cetera, et cetera. Flexibility, sustainability, and purpose are the new buzzwords. These are the new uh, dynamics that are fast emerging. Those were emerging slowly, but now this sudden uh, 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 tsunami, as I said, has forced companies to look at these three pieces in a very, very different way. So what is the purpose of the organization? Uh, what kind of business model are they offering? Is it sustainable? Is it going to be able to bear the shocks, for example, that uh, the one that we just went through and how flexible uh, the model is in terms of operating in what? Uh, we are again facing a very, very strong and a very, very significant danger of uh, global recession. And as I said, the next two, three months are going to, um, you know, clear out a few things in terms of where we are heading globally. And eventually we see more organizations, more businesses, more startups losing out than winning. Uh, again, depending on how you look at uh, the change whether you look at it as an opportunity or whether you look at it as, uh, um, you know, a design. So if uh, this was a slide which was uh, shared uh, a couple of months back when we had just entered into the lockdown. And as you can see, it, uh, 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 it talks about some of the potential losers uh, because of the uh, COVID crisis and which sectors and which industries could be potential winners. So as we are always already observing uh, tourism, aviation, automotives, construction, manufacturing, et cetera, even education looks like uh, is going to end up losing in terms of the business uh, growth and model. However, there are some industries and sectors which are kind of borderline and depending on how they uh, manage the opportunity, uh, which has been forced on them, so some sectors, especially the agricultural sector, the e-commerce sector, the ICT, the healthcare, the food processing, medical supply sector could be uh, uh, some of the sectors which could be gaining out of the crisis. 
So there are possibilities. There are, again, as I said, numbers being worked out. People are trying to figure out, you know, how to change, how to adapt, how to move the business model so that they end up winning rather than losing. Uh, and now I'm going to introduce a word, which I'm sure some of you must have heard. Uh, it's called VUCA. And uh, uh, while the VUCA world, we had already stepped in prior to this crisis, uh, but nobody could foresee that uh, uh, we will have to manage and navigate through such a huge change in such a short uh, uh, period of time uh, as it has happened over the last couple of months. So VUCA stands for a volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous world. And this is going to be the new norm. So uh, uh, that's why I'm trying to set the pretext of the discussion because every, whether you talk about doing your first job or uh, running your own business or setting up a startup operation or working for a startup operation, you have to keep in mind that uh, you will be operating in an external environment which will be completely volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous. And this is going to be a new reality. And this is a trait that we'll all have to learn to live with because that's how the new world is going to uh, be operating. And again, just to give you some facts and figures, and this is uh, 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 you know not very recent. This is actually... Uh, from uh, some facts that the head of McKinsey uh, shared when he visited Pakistan a couple of uh, years back. And I'm just putting them on the screen because I was lucky to be in the audience when uh, uh, he was here. And I listened to the talk and I was, I'm, I'm, I always quote these figures when I talk to especially the young graduates, because this will give you a very different perspective of how things used to be uh, and how things have changed and how fast they are going to change going forward. So it is not going to be business as usual. It is actually going to be business. If you look at a country like China, for example, uh, over 1 billion population, far more than 1 billion now, uh, 20, per, 20 million people per year move from rural cities, uh, rural areas to cities. So it's 54% urbanized. Uh, there is a growing middle class, and again, these figures are uh, not very recent, so uh, don't quote me on that. But the estimate is that uh, about 2.2 billion people, which is more almost one third of the total population, will move to middle class in the next 10 years, largely due to this urbanization factor. Uh, the way we are using the natural resources, according to a research, looks like we'll need seven planets the size of Earth to cater for our requirements of natural resources over the next 30 years, which is not too far. And if, uh, if I'm not, a lot of you will be alive. So uh, there is a lot of uh, uh, concern and discussion going around, you know, how do we preserve? And this is actually uh, ending up uh, in some companies, uh, with some companies having these sustainability agendas and talking about reducing carbon footprints, et cetera, et cetera. Another reality that is fast coming up, if you look at South Asia alone, and uh, which is, uh, you know, the most fast growing uh, uh, region of the world, you will need 80 companies the size of Nestle, and Nestle is one of the biggest FMCGs in the world to meet the demand for agri-based food products because, you know, people are becoming more conscious about what they eat, about the health, et cetera, et cetera. So again, that's a very, very different dynamic we'll all Mobile e-commerce platforms, look at Alibaba, Uber, Amazon, and in today's world, Zoom, uh, Microsoft Teams, look at all these platforms, which are now be slowly becoming a part of our day-to-day -day lives we will not be able to manage our, uh, our lives without, for example, uh, to like Zoom going forward. And we were already dependent on a lot of other platforms uh, uh, for the last few years. In 2014, 5% organizations were disrupted by digitization. Uh, and today it's much more than 25%. The chief digital officer role uh, which is different from the chief information officer role, by the way, is fast becoming a permanent role on the executive leadership team of many companies. Uh, 
uh, and it is irrespective of the sector. So every sector is trying to catch up and get in the, into the digital space by uh, giving them a seat on the leadership team. Uh, if you look at the level of automation, 40% of a typical worker's work will be automated in the next 10 years and now let's say in the next seven, eight years. Uh, uh, so again, this will have a huge impact in, the num in terms of the numbers of uh, people who are deployed for different manual-based jobs. The uh, computing power, if uh, we look at how the computer works today, it mimics the mouse brain. In the next less than three years, it will be able to mimic the human brain 100%. Yeah, so, and you can see we are getting there very, very fast with all the AI stuff and virtual reality and the robotics, uh, you know, playing their part. Uh, this again is a, a couple of years old figure. So I'm sure it must have gone up uh, drastically more than 5 billion people connected in the world today, increasing by thousands every day data, Internet of Things. Every two days as a human race, we collect more data than in our previous 2000 years combined. Imagine, yeah? So every two days, the data that we used to generate in 2000 years, the human race is now generating in two days. Uh, productivity improvements uh, are going up by eight to 9% per year by using this uh, artificial intelligence and technology. Interconnectedness of the world through trade, capital flows, data resulting in higher GDP growth, device connectivity, 7 billion plus mobile phones, more than the population of the world in use. Again, we cannot imagine our life without a phone today. We are so dependent and so uh, uh, interconnected through that device. New technologies changing the fundamental conventional parts of business. You know, so how do you look at assets? Do you need a brick and mortar structure or uh, uh, can you operate without it? Even if you are in the banking sector, uh, how does that impact costs? How does that impact your employee numbers? Who are going to be your competitors? The traditional uh, 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 competitor groups are changing. There are new uh, competitors emerging which are completely in different businesses. But uh, because of the technological advances, the whole landscape is changing in terms of the business model. Uh, by 2025, the world will see uh, a, a population over the age of 65 will double. So between, let's say, 2015 and 2025 in 10 years, out of which we have already, uh, you know, five years have passed, uh, we'll see the population of 65 plus doubling. And for the first time in human history, we'll have more people over 65 than under 14. So imagine. So the countries having a young population will have a tailwind instead of a headwind. And luckily, Pakistan is one of those uh, countries. So apart, uh, despite having a lot of challenges in our economy and our governance, etc., we still have 60% of our population, which is below 30. And that is going to be giving us a lot of tailwind versus some of the known uh, global economies of the world today. Healthcare costs are rising. And now, as I said, with this new dynamic of COVID coming up, this is going to rise further. And the 90% of these costs are accumulated in the last two years of a personal life. So think about it. Uh, a lot of companies are thinking about how do we uh, uh, do we need to revise the retirement age uh, because the uh, healthcare facilities enhance as employees near retirement and the uh, life expectancy is also improving with a lot of improvement in healthcare facilities. So a completely different dynamic, aging population, better healthcare, more life expectancy, et cetera, et cetera, which is turning the tide when it comes to economies and business models. So what, where are we going to end up? We are going to end up having uh, people who if they have a lifelong learning attitude, uh, a concept about retooling themselves uh, online, learning about the technology, learning about uh, the new tools, uh, uh, you know, showing adaptability, 
uh, they will be the people who will be, uh, uh, you know, kind of be able to survive. Uh, and I'm sure you must have heard, it's not the strongest who survive, it's the most adaptable who survive. And that's why cockroach is the most, uh, uh, is the only species uh, which has uh, the longest lifespan because it is very, very adaptable. Um, and I've also heard experts talking about that the number of jobs actually are not going to decrease as we move a step into the new uh, VUCA world. They're actually going to increase. However, the skill set is going to change. So the traditional skill set will no longer be relevant, uh, but the actual number of jobs will increase. So if you are able to retool yourself, relearn things, you will be in a much better shape than a lot of uh, your peers. Uh, again, a lot of geopolitical instability, which we see all across oil prices falling, uh, you know, uh, unexpectedly commodity prices changing, consumer habits changing because of technology. And there were some very interesting examples discussed in that discussion, I remember, uh, but I'll keep it to some other part. Uh, average lifetime of a company has reduced from 90 years in 1935, which is about 100 years, less than 100 years back to 18 years in 2001 and now less than 15 years. And I'm sure uh, these days there are companies who uh, reach a trillion dollars turnover in less than three years. And there are companies who vanish after that in less than five years. So all kinds of uh, uh, very different things happening. If, the, if, a, if a business is changing by 40% over three years, that is typically regarded as slow. The pace of innovation and technology is so fast and businesses, the models, the uh, ways of working change uh, accordingly. And if a business is not able to cope up with that pace of change, it is regarded as a slow moving business. So the old norm used to be stability, certainty, simplicity, clarity. And the new norm in the new VUCA world, which you are all going to see and enter and experience and manage as you grow in your careers, is going to be about volatilities, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity. And this is going to cause a lot of discomfort. The paradigm of lifetime employability is now gone. Uh, companies which are uh, uh, which have been there for, let's say, 100 years plus now talk about a uh, lifetime, uh, lifetime employability. They don't talk about lifetime employment. They talk about lifetime employability. So how well can they equip you with the skills who can still keep you relevant in the job market? Because again, that's not a very comfortable, comfortable feeling to have, but you have to live with it. You have to live with that discomfort if you want to survive in the new world. So we have to change because we are in a new world and we are still using old tools. And that is more true for a country like Pakistan than many other countries. And I have lots of uh, facts and reasons to say that, but I think we need to move much faster than the rest of the world if we are going to be successful in the new world. And a couple of other interesting figures, if you see what is the most biggest, single most important challenge to overcome, you see two clear bars uh, uh, in this uh, slide. One is using social media effectively and the other is online or blending learning delivery. These are the two biggest challenges which uh, our uh, management population leaders globally face when it comes to uh, managing through technology and looks like technology is going to be the biggest tool to manage going forward. So these are some of the challenges uh, we'll need to uh, overcome. The landscape, as we said, has been uh, evolving for the last uh, 10 years, especially. And now we are entering an age where we are going to, uh, we are already, I think, in the virtualization uh, age. And very soon we'll be moving to anticipation and eventually to robotization, which is going to drastically change the dynamics of the job market. So if I were you, and if I had to look at, uh, you know, how the world is going to be and how am I going to manage my career in, uh, in VUCA times, I would look at it differently. I would like to have VUCA flipped in terms of uh, making the V instead of uh, volatility, make it 
more about velocity instead of uh, uh, you know uh, uncertainty i would talk about an orthodoxy i i would talk about challenge in the status quo i would talk about what are the new areas what are the new technologies that i can uh, learn i would talk about co creation because uh, through the virtual uh, platforms there are huge uh, opportunities for co creation not uh just locally but at the global level and instead of ambiguity i would look at abundance because you know again a lot of good information a lot of uh, knowledge is available online which if we want we can benefit from so instead of looking at it as volatility uncertainty complexity ambiguity I, if i were you i would look at it you know how fast i can change with what velocity Uh, how unorthodox can i be to uh, make myself a success how can i co-create with uh, uh, people from across the world and how can i talk about abundance and how can i benefit from the abundance of options that are available <clears throat> and for that it is important to have a very agile approach a collaborative approach to change rapidly you have to have a vision uh which uh, which seeks to create a clear future state as clear as possibly you can uh, uh clarify it you need to understand not just uh, you know your uh, your own perspective and your own vision but also the other people's perspective who with whom you're going to collaborate so stop look and listen to the characteristics at play you know because a lot of things as i said we have never seen before and uh, especially when you grow in your careers you will have new characteristics emerging every new day so you'll have to be very very patient and persistent uh in your approach to be able to understand what's happening and how can you manage uh, uh those new dynamics also a uh, very very important when you talk of clarity uh, uh the young generation of today needs to be able to have the ability to make sense of the chaos because we will see chaos we'll actually see more chaos in the world going forward because of not just this recent covid uh, uh uh emergency but a lot of other things that will emerge out of this crisis and it will be fully chaotic and in that chaotic environment you are going to uh be thinking about making a career for yourself so you have to be able to make sense of the chaos and that's where i think the emotional intelligence part is going to be very very important you need to really really work on how emotionally intelligent you can be to be able to make sense of the chaos to be able to you know work on your agility have a clear vision and have the ability to understand stop look and listen so which companies which organizations which startups are going to be meaningful uh in the in the new world which bring purpose and meaning to the societies to the communities they are operating in you know uh, uh companies organizations businesses who not only talk about their pnls and how profitable they are how much money they are making but also why do they exist uh what social uh, uh relevance do they have uh do they provide a meaningful uh platform for young people like yourself to be able to contribute and make sense of not just their professional but also their personal lives uh there will be companies if they provide a platform where people can connect with themselves and with others will be successful and again i'm i'm sharing this slide because i want to again throw some ideas uh on the table for you to think about uh do you want to look for those organizations or do you want to create those organizations do you want to create those platforms because i know it's a a very good institution where you have spent the last uh, number of years of your of your life and now is the time to uh bring some meaning uh to to whatever you have learned in this environment and with the external environment changing how can you contribute uh how can you show your uh humility humility is going to be important humility uh comes uh with everything in your personal life in your uh, professional life you know titles don't matter in the new world they will not matter if a ceo is not able to relate to what 
real life challenges their employees are facing for example these days we talk about you know working remote working and as organizations open up we are looking at how do we bring people back there are so many aspects to look at for example transportation for example how do they live for example how uh, how will they be able to protect themselves and their families from this uh, virus if we open up and how can you be be able to understand you cannot understand uh, these dynamics unless you are humble so humility is going to be paramount going forward as a trait of leadership uh, the ab the ability to think differently and to make as i said as i said sense of the chaos make sense of what is going to work what is not going to work as an idea uh, what what is it what what is its relevance to the challenges that your society and your country and your community for example is facing if you cannot think about those things and if you cannot simplify the challenges to give a meaningful solution to those challenges uh, it will be difficult to survive so you need to think differently and simply and make sense of the challenges and provide some relevant solutions how do you boost collaboration how can you best uh, utilize the platforms that you are available that you have available and also in terms of engaging and energizing with the with a very new way of life and way of working how do you how are you able to do that uh, yourself and for the others who work with you and how well do you collaborate uh, so again i am not going to spend a lot of time on this in my opinion uh, the the c which is the corona can be defeated through seven c's of vuka leadership uh, showing courage at this time we need a lot of courage uh, especially the young generation needs to show a lot of courage uh, and create an environment where you know uh, companies can uh, work on their sustainability agendas uh set up purpose driven business models and grow in that environment show the character the character we uh we don't talk about often we talk about a lot of leadership attributes but the character of the leader is equally important the, and everyone is a leader in my opinion in one way or the other so what are the uh ethics the values how do you react in face of uh, adversity are going to be very very important so it's not just about personality it's not just about charisma it's about character it's about humility it's about values uh, which are going to be the defining traits of leadership in the new world uh, how clear are you in your purpose are you always talking about profits or do you also think about what is right what is right for the society what is right for the community what is right for the world at large and every day these days you are seeing on the social media very very uh, uncomfortable things happening very very wrong things happening so would you like to be a part of such organizations which stand for things uh, which are uh, not right so uh, and how do you define what is right is very very important and that relates directly to your clarity of purpose uh so uh so i think my screen is uh, yeah it's working now we talk of collaboration you talk about remote working you talk about uh, uh you used to talk about teamwork but now it's going to be all about collaboration uh you talk about creativity college degrees by the way a lot of companies big companies very well known companies have stopped uh considering college degrees as the criteria they fo they focus more on your certifications on your skill set on your entrepreneurial skills on your leadership traits so their assessments their uh, uh, uh their uh, points of entry uh, the, the the way they manage those points of entry are so stringent and they analyze you in such a detailed manner uh, that if you are able to make it to those organizations degrees really don't matter and in any case i have always believed your degrees are only a passport for you to enter an organization and after that it's your uh performance it's your traits it's your it's your character which drives your progress uh, uh in your career consistency is going to be paramount we talk about resilience we talk about tenacity we talk about engaging for a common purpose you know the world has to be seen has to really come together as one community now 
and everyone has to do the right thing for the world which is you know how do you how do you make the world more sustainable how do you make you the best use of natural resources how do you provide products which don't affect the health of the general population etc cetera, etc cetera. so a consistency in thinking consistency in, in behaviors is going to be key and last but not the least the customers are not going to go away even though the nature and the platforms for customers are going to change but if you are able to work on the first six c's that i have i've highlighted uh, you will be able to always focus on the customers that you're serving because all the time we have customers to serve which could be internal or external so how accommodating how adaptive how flexible you are to uh, to to provide the solutions to the customers and that's all i had so uh, as i said in the beginning and i'm again very thankful uh, for showing the patience to hear me out but the idea was to give you some uh, pointers which you can uh, later speak to the panelists about and ask me if you have any questions and uh, and uh, and that's all i had thank you very much Parham. thank you very much chairman sir thank you very much for sharing your thoughts and uh, we take questions towards the end in the interest of time uh, so thank you very much i think it was quite an interesting conversation in terms of uh, how you described buka and how you you know you gave your uh, perception of the concept and uh, i really like the tsunami of the sea well it is your part so uh, moving ahead like i said that you know we've got amazon doing an opening speech and then we've got a panel the panel is to give you all an insight or or to some better understanding of you know church things as well as the entrepreneurial side of things and you know uh, uh how how can things be done better and you know what are the opportunities that you have out there uh so uh, with that i'd like to introduce our panelists our first two panelists are from the hr sec uh, the hr world they have they are both corporate uh, hr people they've spent their time and uh, luckily and very proudly that we say that both of them are iobm alumni and uh, have been through what you are experiencing now in terms of they've gone through the college they understand things and then they've faced the world so uh, we'll talk to them about their experiences we'll talk a little bit about how you know uh, how what what their advice is for people who are now graduating and getting into the uh, into the job market so our first panelist from in the hr panel is uh, maliha murtaza khan maliha heads the leading and organization development and diversity and inclusion uh, and inclusion initiatives at the aga khan university in pakistan she has more than 19 years of personal or professional experience in hr and which is mostly in the learning and uh, learning and organization development side of the, uh, the thing she interestingly has started her career from iobm and uh, after she did her mba and then uh, you know she was managing the training and consultancy unit of the of the institute and was also a senior faculty uh, in the on the marketing and management side uh, with aku she's been there with, for since 2010 and has uh, progressed in her career in the last 10 years consistent growth in human resource uh, business as well as capacity building so maliha welcome to our panel today so before we move on before i introduce kamran who's our uh, you know our our second panelist maliha sam thodi si baat karte hain so maliha what is the current job market like and what do you think is the skill set that people need in the current job uh, you know in the current job in the current scenario uh, to really be out there and get jobs right now and and you know talk a little bit about what sectors are are looking are hiring these days you know not just the traditional sectors i think our students need to look at some non traditional sectors as well so if you can uh, you know start the conversation there ji maliya over thank you farang thank you for such a nice introduction um i'll start off with uh, saying the fact that what uh, msi also mentioned that covid entered our lives with in, in an emergency and when it came there was a transformation that took place for a lot of uh, organizations at this particular time they're trying to settle the dust but when the dust settles and and things are managing on the on the pace they are being done right now i'm sure there's going to be a lot of opportunities are are way and there's going to be uh, a lot of things that people would actually look forward to there'll be assignments that would be uh, more uh, on a contractual basis there'll be more uh, skill set based hiring um currently yes maybe 
companies are um, like the picture emma was actually giving are is in a state of uh, uncertainty because they're solving their own problems right now but once this dust settles there i personally feel there is a lot of opportunity for the younger generation to come because the greatest skill set that would be required right now are the skill set which we see in the younger generation that graduates or 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 has been there in the market for the last maybe max 10 years because they are adaptable they are flexible they they move into collaborations and they are the ones who are uh, who have less attention span so they 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 are not one of those who used to stick to the jobs for a very long time so apparently this kind of uh, uh, environment that we have right now is an ideal for the younger graduates uh, and the companies that are working right now have have been seeing this trend earlier but um since larger organizations have all sorts of um people sitting in respective positions there's generation x working there's generation y working so it it takes them certain time for them to adjust to these norms so i particularly feel that in the coming time uh, ahead there'll be more opportunities for the younger generation that would be tech savvy because uh, digitalization is on the boost and uh, who can be more better tech savvy than the younger generation we have and um, a lot of um, uh, skill set in terms of people who can uh, link things for example we used to think that i've graduated in this particular area i need to search a job in this particular side you have to think about a mix you have to think about uh, uh, how uh, the job is going to benefit you as far as the companies are concerned i'm um, i'm actually seeing in my organization also there are a lot of temporary assignments being created there there's work on the digital side being done so there will be opportunities it's not that and um, maybe some uh, organizations have stopped i i saw a question here that mentioned that um, what are people thinking about the fresh graduates during pandemic can we survive without fresh graduates we cannot i mean fresh graduates are the young blood that are pumped in the system to give us uh, the kind of energy that's required the brains that have been working in the organization become uh, tuned to the system over time so um, there will be assignments and there are assignments being created and a lot of assignments would be on the digital side for example i take my organization a lot of communication role has enhanced right now and uh, communication even learning and development has become more of communications we are talking about e learning we are talking about uh, videos we we within these three months we've uh, we we've, we've become more adaptive to things which we thought that were scary for people to adjust to so these are the things you've adjusted in three months there's going to be more so these uh, um, kind of jobs would be created and they will be there in क्योंकि ऑर्गेनाइजेशन टोटली खत्म नहीं हो जाएंगी इट्स गोइंग टू बी देयर देयर इज गोइंग टू बी चेंज एंड द ट्रांजिशन इज टेकिंग प्लेस राइट नाउ एंड वंस दिस ट्रांजिशन सेटल्स देयर इज गोइंग टू बी अ लैंड ऑफ अपॉर्चुनिटीज सो आई पर्टिकुलरली थिंक दैट फॉर द यंगर जनरेशन हु इज वाचिंग अस राइट नाउ एंड दे फील के ओ माय गॉड हमारा क्या होगा एंड वी डोंट हैव एनी जॉब्स और व्हाट विल आई डू दे शुड लुक एट द सिचुएशन इन अ वे दैट इंस्टेड ऑफ सेइंग दैट uh the opportunity is nowhere the opportunity is now here they it's the life is much better for them than the people who've been there in the market for x number of years it's more difficult for people who've spent maybe if there are graduates who have more than 15 years of experience in the market it's more difficult for them in case uh, they are out of job to get into system until unless they are more adaptable they are more tech savvy and they do not adapt to uh, a respective skill set that's required but for the younger generation just wait for the dust to settle you have a land of opportunities and you will be the one conquering the world so kamran Thank maybe you, you can add on something to it also yeah so kamran before you start off i think uh, let me introduce kamran first kamran again like i said is a, is a, we're proud to have him as an alumni of iobm he's a transformational leader people coach and he has uh, you know he's a, he's a very seasoned senior hr professional who worked at cross 
a number of uh, piece work on it, but on the strategic HR side as well as the organizational design and development. And he's worked with uh, companies like Unilever, UBL, MCB, and uh, and KE or, or, or Karachi Rhetoric, as we used to call it. Um, he believes in creating value by by driving an organization's performance and you know, he's one of those people who really, you know, even in our past engagements, who really believes that driving uh, of excellence through people is the key to success for any organization. So he's currently engaged with AI Mir LLC, which is a USA-based management consultancy firm as, as a senior partner. And uh, he's also a director at the PICG, which is the Pakistan Institute of Corporate Governance. So Kamran, thank you much for joining us. Welcome to our panel. Uh, Two things. One is uh, again the, the question that I had, uh, uh, you know, uh, shared with Maliha, which was about what are the sectors, what are the opportunities, what should uh, uh, the children, uh, you know, uh, graduates now be looking into. And I think uh, a, a second part of that question, which I would like you to uh, talk about, is how should the HR departments flex their hiring patterns and their employment models to have more direct impact on the job market? You know, especially in the wake of this new norm. So, if you can share your views on that, thank you. Fantastic, fantastic. Assalamu alaikum and thank you very much, Farhan. And, and uh, great overview. Ahmed, I loved what you what you had to say. Uh, very well rounded, and I think it was uh, very very enlightening. Thank you so very much. Thank you so very much for sharing your views. Um, uh, Maliha, thank you so much. It was very insightful, and I think that's a ray of hope that we all must carry and uh, propagate because that's that's inshallah taala that's the way forward. Uh, just adding on to what is what's already said, um, I'll take a lead from what Ahmed said and. Um, I would call it the tsunami of C, right? The tsunami of C, I see it as a tsunami of chances. So um, that's how I put it. I mean, the C, what, what all has happened. Uh, this kind of forum was unimaginable uh, before, before all this happened, right? And we made it happen, it's happening, right? It's happening all around us. There's so many opportunities that are surrounding us. Um, so it's, it's not all bad, it's not all bad. It's challenging, it's challenging, but it's not all bad. Coming to the market, it, it may not be as as um, receptive as receptive as it was uh, the last year. Typically, talking about very very focused talk about um, uh, the management trainee candidates or so on and so forth. But it may not be as receptive as it was the last year. But it surely is receptive. People are hiring. Organizations are hiring. They're hiring differently. They're hiring for their different skills. They're hiring for different um, different kind of. Uh, 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 attitude and um, behavior, behavior set. If I, were, if I was to put it, if I, would, if I was to put it that way, um, coming to, coming a little bit specific, right? So, what what really is needed now? So there is a need for at an abundant mentality, right? We are generally focused towards you know we we are grown. It's a capitalist you know economy and so on. So I wouldn't want to get into that part, but. We generally are a product of a capitalist mentality that you know, there's a scarcity and I have to cut my share out, right? And it, this is, this is, I think this is an ideal example, an ideal time that we have to think like, uh, like we should think. I mean, so it, it, it's an abundant mentality and we, there's abundant out there and we'll carve it out. Every revolution, every revolution has its time. So it's slow, the change is slow and it eventually picks up and so would the organization, right? They would pick up. And they're like, like uh, Malia rightly said, that organizations will pick up. There's a lot of dust right now, yes, but organizations are figuring out things. They are, they're figuring out. So as a candidate, if I was to put myself in, in a fresh graduate's shoe, what would I look at? And that's what, that's what I was trying to figure out. I would look at a few things, right? I would look at the economy. I would look at what the economy is saying and where's the future heading. And then I think Emma talked, um, uh, he gave an elaborate um, idea and elaborate view of what, what, what all there is. And it was fantastic. And I wouldn't want to get back to that, but move forward and build up on that discussion. So what is the economics, right? Second is um, how the organizations and businesses are, my business is reacting to that. And then there is me, right? What is my role or my flex to the situation? So now if I'm looking at something like, you know, I want to just get on and I throw my CV and if some, somebody would come looking for me that, you know, please come and have an interview with us, probably that would not happen. Because rightfully so, Ahmed said that, you know, degree wins you a position. I would probably say that degree only wins you an interview call, perhaps, right? And in today's time, 
even that is a challenge because when you go through a million psychometrics and so on and so forth, your basically degree perhaps is the last thing and the only thing that they ask for, ask for um, is probably a GPA, right? A minimum standard GPA. So what we need, really need to do is people who have, people who think, people who can actually adapt to the situation, people who can actually flex with time, they understand what dynamics, the personality, the traits. And again, I wouldn't want to repeat a lot of stuff that has been said. It's just, just not going out to, for a job hunt. It is going out and shaping up what you, what, what's your game, right? What is exactly, what, what, what's that you're looking for? Um, purpose, is it's important. It's the most important thing right now. Are we, are we what, 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 am I, what am I out there for? Look, what am I really chasing out for? Um, am I there just to uh, be another graduate out and you know just curse the market? You know, I was here and nobody bothered to hire me. Or is it something that I have a purpose and that I'm going out for? Unfortunately, I think a lot of times we tend to miss that out and we generally are not tuned that way. Important, and that's very, very crucial that we have a purpose defined when we're going out in the market and very, very clearly defined that this is what this is what my game is. Another part is it's a collaborative market. Now, if I'm going out, what am I taking with me? Well, and that's, a, that's an important question. Organization, or there's more to it. And guys, please listen to this one. Today, and uh, I think Mali have also alluded to that, uh, um, and very rightly, so did um, Emma, and this would actually help me transition into the organization side also. What are we giving to the organization? If there's an organization hiring, then if I'm just sending my CV in, there are a couple of hundred thousand students sending their CV. What's the difference? Why should they look at you? Only because you got a degree from a particular institute and a, and a GPA. Very, very, very clearly, it is dying out. People look at skills, people look at leadership qualities, people look at how agile you are, people look at uh, the perseverance, the creativity, um, and so many other things, right? So degree is just one of the many elements. So what is it, what is there that you can do in this collaborative world to actually go out? What are those, what are those critical points, right? So how good are you with networking? Are you just relying on some kind of graduate directory or a recruitment portal of a, of a, of a particular organization? Or is it something that you're networking through what and how do you want to collaborate and move on? Uh, how do you want to access people, the right people, the right kind of channels, right? That's important. Two, um, what is your list of, what, who, have you really done your homework? What, what industries would work? Which ones wouldn't work? What would the, the industries that you would like to go for? What prospects they have, right? Is it a short term or a long term? And so on and so forth. I mean, this, so there's too much economics, global economics, how they are shaping up and what kind of impact it would have on those sectors and so on and so forth. So is that is that a job that I want to really want to get into? I mean, that's another question, right? A standard thing was graduate karke nikal gaye, to bas job dunia. Do I really want to do that? Uh, am I cut out for that? Or the opportunities are alluding, something, alluding me to something else? Those are the kind of responses, those are kind of quite critical questions that probably earlier people did not ask as clearly, right? And this is the time that you have to really have an answer to those questions. Um, and people who are able to answer those questions probably would be the smarter ones. And they would have better opportunities, whether going for entrepreneurship or jobs for that, person, for that matter. Coming to, um, coming to another important area, right? Um, now the organizations. This, well, a, lot of, a lot has been said on the job market and the industry. I'll just talk about a few industries, see? Um, Financial sector is currently doing well and in a way that you know there'll be loans, applications coming and so on and so forth. But what's the long-term impact in an economy like Pakistan? You've got to think about that, right? Discounted rates pay loans, and we are not a very educated economy with all due respect. People love borrowing, but they are very not they're not savvy of returning money, right? So um, how would that impact the economy uh, with the banking sector or financial sector per se? Per se? So you got to think about those things, right? FMCGs, short term, long term. Um, E-commerce is absolutely growing and it would grow. But what is my role then? Things like AI coming in and things like skills obsoleting and new skills coming in, that would happen, right? Am I afraid of AI or am I educating AI? Am I partner with machine learning or am I averse to machine learning? These are the kind of things that we really have to have an answer to. I know for a fact that a lot of processes I am working on that would make a lot of HR people obsolete, right? And that's a reality, it would happen, right? Sooner or later. But it's about me as an HR professional thinking that, do I want to be relevant? Do I want to be 
part of the change or do I want to just sit back and you know just look at the change happening and not attending to that, not just not be responsive, right? So that's what I'm saying. You know, you everybody has to play their part. It's just not the market or this industry, but you have to look in look look at yourself at yourself what you're what you're looking for. Another important element, and I'll just quickly jump to that. Uh, that was the flex that organizations have. See, we'll have, to th we'll have to change our thinking from an organization's perspective, and that's what my assessment is. We have been, we have been traditionally looking for a nine-to-five job, right? We've been traditionally looking for a management trainee, and then I'll grow into an assistant manager or a manager or whatever, and, and in 12 to 15 years' time, I'll become a departmental head or whatever. That would change. Organizations have realized with this situation, and when I say it's an opportunity and it's a tsunami of seas, which is chances, organizations can be a lot chance to assess how many jobs they did not require to be a permanent job. They could work without those. They could actually outsource them. They could even BPO them. Business process outsourcing can be done. Part-timers can be done. Assignment based, pe, they could engage people on temporary assignment basis in long-term internship associations. So we'll have to think differently. The students will have to think differently. It's just not that, you know, landing a management trainee job would change my life. Trust me, it's not going to happen, right? Even if you had it, sorry. Yeah, no, I said that, I think that that's a very valid observation that, you know, people need to think differently. Well, your yeah. Learn, unlearn, relearn, wali cheese, that, that needs to be Absolutely. going. And I think one of the most important things about uh, what you said was that, you know, people need to do your, do your homework and play your part once you've done your homework. I think that, that's, that's something that, that's very important. So, uh, come on, we'll come back to you, uh, uh, you know, uh, later on. Thank you very much for sharing those thoughts. So, these were some of the things that, you know, we thought the I would, we'd, we'd ask the HR professionals. And uh, now we'll, we'll move on to the entrepreneurial side of things, you know, and, and you know, what, what, are, what are the, the greener pastures on, are on that side and what are the difficult things on that uh, on, on being an entrepreneur as well because everybody cannot also not be an entrepreneur and everybody can be an entrepreneur but it's about the mindset so uh, our next panelist today is a, is a seeker of clarity as, as uh, you know we would like to refer to him he's devoted his entire life to help advance a vision which is that a world of work where everyone can thrive at their natural best while experiencing a sense of advancement and belonging. This, our next speaker, is Mr. Sohail Zindani, who is the founder of Learning Minds and the founder of Sohail Zindani Company and a curator of the in an Insights Business Forum as well. He's, you know, like we all know him, unconventional, witty, insightful, and most important of all, he's quite disruptive. So, Sohail, welcome. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you, Farhan. I think that's very kind of you uh, for having me on this platform. Nothing as good as being at your university's platform. So, yes. th thank you. I'm sure you're, you're a bit intimidated because the rest of all of us are alumni. So, <laughs> you know. So that, really? That I'm, goes there. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm alumni as well. Oh, yeah, you were also an alumni as well. Yeah. Yes. What, what year yes. was it? Yes, what, what it was 2005 when I passed out. Maliha was my teacher. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. Maliha, okay. that says a lot about it. Okay, so, okay. so sorry. So moving on, Sohail, my question to you is that uh, you know, if you're looking for a job, what are, the, what are the, the, some of the tips and all that stuff? What I want you to talk about is that if, if somebody wants to move into an independent business or looking at an entrepreneurship venture, where should they look for opportunities in the service industry? And what do you see as the core strengths that will make them successful? Because, you know, right. you've been in the service industry for a while. You're now looking at the new norm. So what's your experience been like and how has it evolved? And, uh, you know, how do you see things? So over to you. Okay. Thank you, Varan. Um, uh, so I was listening to Ahmed and uh, then Malia and Kamran. And the um, uh, great thing is that we had realistic speakers. So... Uh, so I can speak my heart out easily. Um, yeah. The first thing I want to start off with is uh, something which is light-hearted in terms of its conversation. I was in the Facebook page a joke that someone posted on Facebook. And it was that I was not going to go to Europe tour for the first time. 
इससे पहले हमेशा पैसों की कमी की वजह से नहीं जा सकती थी नाउ देर इज अ प्रॉब्लम अभी हमारे मैं आई बिन लिस्निंग टू अलॉट ऑफ यूथ कॉन्वर्जेशन एंड दे आर ऑल क्राइंग अबाउट जॉब अपॉर्चुनिटीज ये क्राइंग तो हमारी ऐसी है इस वक्त एज ए कोरोना से पहले तो जॉब्स की भरमार थी आई मीन द माइंड सेट दैट इज ट्राइंग टू बींग प्रोमोटेड इन ऑल दीज आई बिन लिस्निंग टू कॉन्वर्जेशन हाय हम मर गए हाय as if i mean people from us and uk were coming to pakistan for all the kind of job openings that we had no relax it was bad it is bad let's try to see what we can do out of it that's the idea so i think um, uh, it's it's exciting if i have to talk about entrepreneurship in the context of service i think this is a wonderful opportunity to look at the problems um there's something which i learned in this time is how to be how to look at opportunity without being an opportunist how to look at opportunity without being an opportunist so i think this is a wonderful time to look at the problems problems you can solve um, how we have been trained is we have been trained is create a product and now find customers for that right so you have an harpic now somehow try to make sure people are using it it's a time to see what your customer need and then you better create a product and i think there is a massive opportunity with all crises the opportunity on this side goes immense goes exponential um i always differentiate between two things what i know versus what can be done main aapko ek example ke zariye baat samjhata tha and i'm sure all these students would relate to it more um and why students we all panelist can perhaps sing the song with it Uh, I graduated 2005 joined Agha Khan University 6 months period of management trainee I realized I want to excel into career as an independent trainer so I decided to move out uh, wonderful learning there but then again I had a different career aspiration and so I moved out did my thing and today wherever I am I am 2003 there was another person who started off just a freaking blog to talk about cars and that was park wheels this rascal is now crossing 1 billion dollar estimation what i was doing i was only trying to concentrate on what i know instead of what is possible and i think that is an opportunity which a lot of people miss out we try to only look at what i know and i keep doing it over and over and over again and somehow i wonder why things are not changing i think this is a time to look at what is possible how it can be done um i was talking to kamran and he shared with me about the collaboration that the university has done with hrsg beautiful that's how universities what we were doing we were just jumping and dancing upon how we can engage our alumni and our own placement departments when you have experts how we can collaborate that's the idea so today i think what i know is of not significant importance what can be done i think all the opportunity lies in there so i think this is a time to design products for your customers rather than trying to find customers for your products and this i think is for everybody um sawal aaya tha ke what majors are you taking for the fresh graduates अब मुझे पता तो नहीं है किसने पूछा लेकिन आई एम श्योर के पूछने का मकसद इनका सवाल सिर्फ सी से ही था कि आई सॉरी हम सी बोलते हैं हम वो तब पास हुए ना तो हमारे मुंह पे सी ही है वो आई नहीं आता तो वो सवाल सी से ही था कि ये आपका प्लेसमेंट डिपार्टमेंट क्या कर रहा है मतलब अभी आपको पढ़ाई भी हम फिर आपकी प्लेसमेंट भी हम करें दैट्स अमेजिंग दे आर डूइंग इट What are you doing about? Okay, come on, let's tell. Let's look at it. Mane ke ye Kamran aur inki team me kisi ne kuch bhi nahi kiya. Mane ye chill kar rahe, enjoy kar rahe. Talib sahab ne inko kaha relax. To iska kya matlab hai ki aap apni CV ke andar likhenge ki dekhe mujhe panch saal job isliye nahi mili kyunki alumni department ya placement department ne mere liye kuch nahi kiya tha. Does it even make sense? I think this is a great opportunity to look out, seek out things. Seek out problems. मैं तो बहुत कैटेगोरिकली कह रहा हूँ. Seek out problems. People cannot go out. Seek out problems and then provide solutions for that. I see a lot of possibilities and opportunities in in this particular regard. And two things, and I'll conclude. 
two things that people need to master generosity and courage be generous with whatever you know whatever you know at least maliha and kamran these are two of my friends we we, we connected and baat karte rehte they know me social media pe i was never active i was never active on social media it has never been my thing but i came on social media during this time only for one reason and that is if allah has blessed me with perhaps an ability where people would come and listen to me i think this is a time to be generous this is a time to come forward share whatever you know who knows who can benefit from it so first is generosity second is courage and when i say courage i don't say courage is absence of fear courage is not absence of fear courage is your response to fear so of course you know you have invested so many years into your education now you are fearful and you should rightly be fearful if somebody is saying forget about the fear no 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 please don't forget about the fear fear is a very good emotion if you route it properly courage is your response to fear so i think that's very important this will create a lot of uh, opportunities in entrepreneurship service product whatever but it has so much of opportunities thank you so hail for that uh, for that very interesting conversation actually i think and some very very pertinently valid points where you you know when you said kr let's look at the opportunity and not be the opportunist or you know design products for customers i think i think everything is perfectly there and and this is one of the our key messages as well for holding these kind of forums is that we want our you know we want the graduates who who come in after us to know to you know to to make good with our experience and to learn from our experience and and be better than and you know and do much more than what we've done so you know uh, I, we were just having this uh, conversation uh, uh, a little while ago that jo aapne baat ki ke yaar focus on what you can do more build on your your things and you know look for look for enhancements so similarly so if you're doing your mba i think iobm is now offering course sera courses to all of its graduates look yeah. for that skill that you need to build through that free coursera course get get the best of the best from coursera use those opportunities i think one of the things that you know uh, graduates now need to really look into is introspectively apne andar apne strengths dekhe and build on those strengths so thank you suhail once again for 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 those words uh, so our next speaker uh, on the panel is is somebody who graduated back in 2006 a very very good and a very uh, interesting personality in terms of you know his experience he's worked with multinationals he started his career like all of us mbas ke liye humne you know bank mein naukri karni hai ya kisi usme kya kehte hain fmcg mein karni hai started with union bank did work with unilever and then with telenor pakistan and then you know like 12 years ago he he just said ke yaar i need to do my own business and for the last 12 years he's been actively involved uh, in, with his own business he now runs a company called e ocean private limited which is the largest messaging and voice services platform and uh, you know any time you dial a number and that uh, now really overdone and overheard voice of that female talking about coronavirus was basically uh, one of asif's uh, uh, you know uh, company who's been doing these kind of things and he's also the co-founder of momentum momentum is the largest startup conference and e- uh, and support ecosystem f- uh, platform in pakistan so uh, and you know uh, interestingly he's also looking at starting two new uh, companies one is verif verif app and the other is kist pay and uh, and he's very excited about kist pay because he tells me that they're trying to enable 220 million pakistanis to acquire smartphones by making it more secure and affordable for the masses so uh, asif jafri welcome uh, to our session thank you very much for joining us ji assalam alaikum uh, farhan and everyone and uh, you're being so kind with your generous uh, introduction no i mean uh, asif is uh, asif is a serial entrepreneur you know you talk to him and you would like to lilu you know quit your job and start doing your own business wali thing So Asif, no, I think uh, okay. Allah is extremely kind. Allah is extremely kind you know, that you know uh, my journey has been a successful one because uh, if you look at the entrepreneurial number, uh, you know yeah. the startups, ninety percent of the startups fail. So if you are among ten percent of the top startups, so basically you know there are number of uh, elements that bring success to you, which and you know Allah's uh, kindness is definitely one of that. 
so you know when uh, i graduated i wanted to become uh, this was not part of uh, i wanted to say but uh, the, the way you made an introduction i just want to add here that the time i graduated i wanted to become the ceo of a bank by the age of 35 but when i joined bank american express bank and union bank i found that to be little or maybe you know very slow moving environment so i decided that you know i need to move and then from banking sector i came to unilever um in sales department and in fact i used to hate sales when i was studying because i was like you know kon kon log hote hain yaar jo sales karte hain didn't know that the entire life i will be doing that uh, so you know never curse anything that you don't like because it might come back to you so uh, after that i i joined telnor telnor pakistan i was part of telnor launch team but uh, during that time i was observing uh, this is very important point i was observing the number of subscribers we were increasing every month right so there were millions and millions of sims we were you know uh, selling and we were giving free to in the market so uh, then what i did i left my job and i first started my career as a telenor franchise and distributor so this is a, again very important point when you want to start your business you know you need to you know do a risk analysis that where, what are you going into because from a startup perspective from uh, you know uh, financial independence perspective it looks very cool right that you are building a company you are going to be a boss but uh, there is a risk profile that you need to assess early on that what you're going to do next uh, frank i am watching your screen can you see me yes okay great so you know you need to run a run prof- uh, risk profile that what you are getting into so my risk profile was that you know maybe i start a business with a entity which is already established back then in 2006 uh, uh, telenor as a telenor franchise and distributor so my job was to take care of a particular you know uh, job like you know to buy sims and uh, you know airtime from telenor pakistan and distribute in one of the areas of karachi uh, so that was you know a uh, very carefully thought out strategy that how you know i'm going to assess my risk profile that i since this is my first business so i'm not going to be expert of all these things so i started with one of the aspect that i can do well which was sales which i learned in my previous job at weavers so you know that was the thing that you know i can start with. but once i you know developed that in like you know one and a half year i realized that you know number of years selling being telenor uh, uh, you know family member I, i i was observing that there are millions of sims we are you know distributing in pakistan new sim new users are coming on board so from you look a bit disturbed are you okay from no i'm i'm absolutely okay i was just uh, typing something on the screen so hence i was kind of moving around all right so yeah so you know um, uh, it was all coming through i was observing so this is a extremely important point that observation uh, you know you need to keep observing what are the new challenges what are the new opportunities are coming in so today i run as you mentioned that uh, i run e ocean private limited which is the largest messaging and voice company in the country um, i figured out during the time of telenor that today we are selling number of sales but tomorrow uh, you know these customers needs to be served digitally so i was observing so just to give you an example that what we do is um, assuming that uh, uh, all of you or majority of you will have a bank account so whenever there is a transaction alert in your account so bank sent you an alert that you know a certain amount has been debited or credited or something a check has been cleared or you know uh, something else has happened in your account so they send you an alert so that's probably most probably that is coming through our company or another example i would like to give that you know kareem is also a, a very good customer so kareem you know whenever you write a, uh, whenever you book a kareem ride and you and you want to talk to a captain so you know you uh, you you try to save your number by share, sharing with your captain right so there's a option called anonymous calling so we innovated that you know because 72% of the cap, uh, you know uh, customers of kareem were female so they we wanted to you know save their identities from uh, you know drivers you know later on if they don't want to harass them if they want to harass them we can protect the identity so uh, you know uh, what i am the message that i'm i will try to give to all the you know students who are you know walking out in a corporate world or you know walking out out of the graduation uh, you know if you look at as entrepreneur as an opportunity that you would like to seek then you know uh, you need to understand that entrepreneurs are the ones who try to solve problems you know so basically if you uh, see that you know do we have more problems today because of covid or do we have less problems in the market 
So you would easily, you can easily identify that there are a number of more problems out there. And if you can solve, if you have passion to solve those problems, then only you should start your business. Because if you start your business for wrong reason, you know, just try to be cool and, you know, you will be raising money and you'll be running a huge office and pool office and all those things. So that will be the wrong reason. And I tell you, if you, if any one of you would like to start your business with those aspirations, you will fall flat on your face. However, uh, in order to save time, I have made a, a slide and I made it just right now, you know, and that's uh, how the startups are required to, you know, respond that whenever there's opportunity, you need to make quick changes and, you know, um, uh, respond to that opportunity. So I would like to share a slide in which I've made six, seven points quickly, you know, uh, why this is a good time to be to have a startup. So uh, can I share, Farhan? Sure, we can see the slide now. Okay, you can see the slide. Sorry, you know, uh, yes. ignore these part, uh, uh, the two points coming at the same time. So why is a good time to start a startup? Uh, so basically, with the uh, with the uh, pandemic challenges and all the situation that we are observing in our surrounding, the new requirements have emerged from pandemic. New opportunities are arrived, and it's your job, it's your task to you know find out those opportunities. You know what are the new opportunities that you can give solutions to, which for which solutions are not in existence in the market. So how you identify opportunities only when you are on the ground, when you're talking to the people, when you're talking to the businesses, talking to the people, what are the problems that you're facing right now? So if you ask general consumers, you know, they'll talk about, we cannot find groceries, you know, we don't want to go to groceries, we don't want to, we don't want to you know, go to the medical stores. I'm just giving you plain, simple examples, you know. So the way to find new opportunities to speak with people, real people out there with real businesses, and that's how you find out what are the new, and, and, and if you find out then enough number of people out there who have similar challenges, and if you can give a solution which will help them to improve their effectiveness and the efficiency that they're aiming at, so you you have found you have found an opportunity that that is scalable and that people would love to pay you for. So the second uh, point that I would like to make is you don't have sunk cost. No fancy office. There's no requirement of fancy office or extra extravagant expenses of traveling and all. So you have a chance because if you go back six months back, you know if you were starting a startup. So, uh, you know, uh, the youngsters, the millennials that you would like to hire, they would prefer to go to a fancy office where, you know, the cool buzzwords, the music and, you know, the good colors and all those things were required. But as we speak today, you know, these are things, these things are not required. And actually, you know, work from home is a great opportunity. So you don't have to have, you know, those costs now with you. So you have opportunity to start your business from your home and you can start, you know, working with people wherever they are. So, you know, the other, other opportunity is that that ample talent available from global tech giants. So, uh, you know, um, there are a lot of people recently that have been laid off by, you know, uh, big companies. So let, let me quote you an example of Kareem. They just announced that, you know, 31% of the staff that, you know, they have laid off. So these are the opportunities that, you know, before this COVID, those people, those talents were not available to you. Now these people are available to you and you can speak to them, uh, you know, uh, and even people who are on job, you know, they're working from home. So you can, you know, talk to them, you can reach out to them and you can ask for them consultancy. You can ask them, you know, um, that can they help you in building something which previously they could not or they would not because they were, you know, sitting in someone's office. So now they're working from home. They have ample amount uh, time so they can help you. And then, you know, about the subject matter experts, the, you know, mentors you're talking about. So basically uh, previously, you know, the subject matter experts generally, you know, are very busy in their own field because they are running something successfully in their life. So, you know, before, uh, well, when the physical meetings were required, you know, so it was very difficult if you were to connect someone in Silicon Valley, or if you want, if you were to connect somewhere in Germany or in UAE or any any part of the world. But now, you know, they are available because they have some more time right? because uh, because of the COVID, they're not working out. They have a lot of time they are saving. Therefore, their time is available, which you can actually, if you convince them that you have something that you're solving in a society, which has a great aspiration to contribute in this time, they are available and they will help you. Uh, then the next point I would say, uh, uh, you know, we, uh, uh, as I spoke in the beginning that, you know, uh, the cockroach mentality. Uh, um, if before COVID, you know, there were some crazy presentations, crazy numbers as if, as if, you know, how you, you know, are going to show the real growth, user consumer growth 
and just user consumer growth without uh, you know showing any profitability on their part so now there's a time where we're talking about cockroach startups versus unicorn startup as uh, uh, the speaker before we mentioned that you know cockroach has a capability that they can survive atomic blast so what are the startups that can survive you know if uh, another pandemic comes in or another tough time comes in and they can survive so it's really important to find out a problem that people are willing to pay for and you have a profitable transaction and you know if you can scale it up you have a profitable business so you know just to add one more thing that you know uh, global tech companies like facebook google amazon microsoft and all these companies offer free services for startups you know if you would like to have uh, start a new business start a new service so you go to amazon and we can also help you uh, get some credits maybe you know $5000 cloud credits $10000 cloud credit for you to start your business and test your business idea with your customers and if you raise money you can you know scale up with their uh, platform so these global tech giants are giving freemium model that you can start with free and if you scale up you can pay them later and you know uh, a lot of uh, people are talking about you know there is no funding available and you know uh, uh, it's very difficult that is true to some extent however if you heard of their few startups in pakistan recently they got the raise funding and these times you know uh, a great example that you know a team member from kareem they got laid off they came back to pakistan and they started the business called bazaar which is basically doing what they are doing they connecting the retailers the retailers kiryana shops with the with the wholesalers in the market and they have developed an app where a retailer can you know download in mobile phone they can place the order and the order is delivered next day uh, to them so basically they are procuring inventory uh, uh, from the wholesalers or from the companies directly so they have raised about 1.3 million dollars which is absolutely amazing uh, so you know uh, if somebody is saying that funding is not available um, that's not 100% true but it's uh, certainly a difficult time and uh, you know but investors are looking at genuine founders and i tell you that you know i have worked with a lot of uh, you know venture capitalists and they have a very good eye to look at you know if the person is starting a startup for the right reason and has the right capabilities to start a uh, business and scale it up so you know you have to be genuine in that approach and uh, so from uh, the opportunity point of view if you can develop something that has is a scaling up in pakistan right now you have absolutely the right opportunity that you can scale up globally so you know so look out for those opportunities which you can solve in pakistan and then you have a very great chance that you know you can scale up globally uh, but again you know having said that uh, so these were some of the points that i wanted to you know share i just made when we started this uh, online session and uh, i shared these points with you uh, maybe you can take a snapshot of this picture and maybe if you want to connect back to me with respect to any point or you would like to have some sort of advice uh, feel free to reach me out um, uh, so uh, uh, so faran basically uh, this was something that you know i wanted to start, talk about the startup but more importantly if you if you want to start a startup um, there are about uh, you know 25 26 uh, startup incubation centers in pakistan which you know provide you a foundation setup or the foundation a setup of mentors and investors if you would like to you know reach them out and if you go their web on the website and you see that you know um maybe there are uh, you know inviting new uh, cohort of startups and i think um, uh, i i will i'm part of uh, alumni council as well so to the best of my information at iobm we are also starting uh, incubation center which to the best of my information has shortlisted about 18 startup so if you're looking for a job or if you're looking to have uh, uh, you know experience uh, working with startup i think that's not a bad idea to you know till the time you look for a job outside why don't you uh, you know look for the opportunity inside iobm and partner with those people and you know do uh, internship with those and help them to grow and learn the process how the startup is being built and how to scale it up out of these incubation center uh, these uh, sorry so the out of these incubation center there are 10 in karachi so you're very lucky if you're from from karachi and uh, you know uh, uh, it's uh, it's there all the incubation center that i know of they are very friendly you call them you talk to them they will allow you to visit them uh, you know speak to the real entrepreneurs who are trying to build something um, so i think that's a great opportunity uh, so a lot of people who are you know maybe scared right now that you know 
uh, there are not many jobs out there. So another thing that you should look at that, you know, global tech giants like Google, Facebook, Microsoft, Amazon, IBM, and likes of that, uh, you know, uh, uh, Netflix and all that, they have announced that, you know, they're looking to evaluate is a physical office is a real requirement. And if that's true, so basically now the job market for you is not just Pakistan. It's, a, it's, a, it's basically a glo global phenomena. So you can apply and, but you need to know one thing. And uh, this is something also very, uh, important that uh, people or, you know, young people ask me, yeah, you know what demand is, requirement is. And my job is generally the same. Demand is the best. You know, if you are the best, you will never be worried about, you know, if, you know, what kind of people are looking outside. So if you're best in your, you know, in your league, people will look for you. You don't have to look for a job. People will look for you. Companies will look for you. However, there's uh, also an effort required at your end to be active on the, you know, platform where people are talking about, people are doing discussions and you participate in those discussions and you prove your, uh, you know, mindsets and a mentality that, you know, you have some expertise. So build those expertise. So uh, Farhan, this was, you know, uh, a small note I wanted to share. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think that was quite, uh, quite informative in terms of, you know, uh, you saying that it's a good time to start a startup. And I really like the line where you said, yeah, be the best in your field. So, so basically, uh, you know, to all the graduates, this was just to give you an idea, KR, what is the, the two sides of the spectrum? And, and you know, what are the conversations? HR wale kya soch rahe hai, flexible soch rahe hai, and you know, what are, what, are, what are the entrepreneurial view or the entrepreneurs, what are they thinking and how do they really get into, you know, different things and, and how they can support it. So irrespective of, you know, which side you want to take, I think there is ample opportunity, but the time, the opportunity will not come to you. You have to reach out to the opportunity. You have to seek the opportunity and then make good use of it. So with that, uh, thank you very much to all the panelists for their time and for sharing their uh, their thoughts and comments. Um, as we move to our, uh, and we will now move to our uh, last segment for today, which is a guest speaker. We thought that when we take a HR uh, practitioner's ki or entrepreneur's ka view, lenge, so we would like to go back to the academia and we'd like to go back to IOBM. So our guest speaker tonight is Ms. Kossar Saeed. Ms. Kossar Saeed is heading the Department of Internship Placement and the International Office at IOBM. And she's also an associate professor in marketing. She has a very diversified experience, you know, which includes the corporate, academic, entrepreneurial, and, and, and also uh, from the development sector. And she's worked with the Alphan Foundation and with uh, agencies like Interflow as well. She's an experienced academic researcher and consultant in the, in the field of marketing and management. And she's also enrolled as a PhD student in marketing. So Ms. Kossar Saeed, welcome to, 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 to the conversation. Hello. Sorry, you mute. Can you unmute yourself, ma'am? It's okay, you have to ask me. Okay, thank you, Farhan, for the nice introduction. Thank you very much. Nein. And thank you. thank you very much for joining us. Uh, if you can give us an academic institution view on the current job market, you know, how do job fairs work these days? How do you solicit internships in these times? And what, what is the new, uh, you know, the new norm uh, from the institutes? So if we can, if you can please share your view. Thank you. Okay, I, I'm really um, encouraged today from the Malia's talk, from uh, Asif Jafri, whatever he said about the entrepreneurship and, uh, and who said Kamran Siddiqui, because uh, I, we are having really a shortage of uh, jobs and internships these days. It is really, it has become very challenging for us to um, to come up with the uh, with internships for our graduates and the jobs also to give them jobs for the new graduates because if I compare it for the from the last year last year every day we were um, circulating at least uh, ten to twelve jobs every day and now they have dwindled it 
dwindled to approximately three to four jobs. And those jobs have just started coming up because before this, the two months, there were no jobs at all. So um, I am really encouraged today that if you people are so hopeful and um, I was not hopeful because uh, um, you see that COVID has uh, really hit the, all the economies and in Pakistan it has really hit us really bad because uh, uh, we were already we had the shrinking economy even before the COVID. We were short, uh, there was a shortfall of rupees, uh, 900 billion uh, rupees, and we were 25% uh, uh, lesser than the what we were targeting. So like the jobs were uh, shrinking. So with the COVID, of many sectors uh, like automobile, like manufacturing, like uh, retail, like um, uh, restaurant industry, they have been hit hard. And uh, obviously the economy will pick up if the government comes up with the right, uh, right steps, but definitely it will take time. So what to do now? All of you have already said what to do. That is the students, the graduates, they need to relearn. They need to retool themselves. They um, need to revitalize their skills. And they need to learn how to work from home, how to work from uh, remotely. Because as many of you have already said that uh, the jobs which are going to come will be more project-based, will will be more like uh, it's i mean the boundaries of the the countries won't be there so it is it is uh, they can work from anywhere so that is that that um, uh, the uh, i mean the good international companies they have already started investing a lot in the training of their uh, staff so um, that is uh, my point is this, that the students, the graduates, they need to, um, they need to sort of uh, re relearn the new skills, revitalize their skill sets. So this is it. And then you asked for the job fairs and uh, everything that is the job fairs are obviously, um, we will continue with the job fairs and we will continue with marketing of our graduates as far as possible. We will work with the HR managers and we will work with the uh, how to sort of tell them that what they require to do, what they uh, need to learn. But then we can bring the horse to the water. We cannot make it the make the horse drink the water so it is it is in the end it is finally the onus lies with the graduates that they have to uh, sort of do whatever it is possible for them to do so that is my uh, take any other question specifically thank you i just have one thing uh, there's a lot of conversation going around uh, these days about virtual internships so hmm. if you could just share your views on virtual internships because some organizations have actually come out and are offering virtual inter internships to, the, you know, to students. Yes, number of uh, virtual times. the view ahead in terms of experience. Right. I'm really happy that number of organizations like Hapco, like Engro, like uh, Liberty Books, like many other organizations, they have offered the virtual internships, and we are encouraging students to do the uh, to do the internships because this has become really challenging for us. That how to provide internships with so many to so many students. We have approximately 670 students registered with us for summer internships and you so so coming up with the 670 internships is really a very challenging so if the organizations are prepared prepared to come uh, to give them the virtual internships we will be really um, thankful to the organizations and we are ready to work with the organizations to help them how to uh, come up with the, the, I mean, how to structure the internships, which are virtual, those virtual internships. 
so um, all of you are the i mean many of you are the employers so we request you malia and uh, kamran if you have the internships please do let us know right so thank you very much point ji ji bilkul kamran very quickly very quickly uh, dr passer Uh, and others also uh, for 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 the students who are graduating looking for internships etc so there's a quick uh, there's a quick link that i shared with uh, farhan i could uh, we could be there's a quick service that we're offering all your students even alumni who probably who may have lost their jobs for any reason due to due to the covid situation or the graduating students people are looking for internships you could actually go to this link create a profile and we are working with a lot of organizations that are offering e internships um the trainee program and so on and so forth so we could actually connect students directly through their profiles and uh, you know offer that valued service to the organizations and the students and they don't have to pay anything for that they can just go there create their profile so that that would enable a service and uh, a connection between students who are seeking out internship opportunities job opportunities etc right it just be value added uh, what is the link Uh, Kamran, are you posting the link in the in the in the chat? I'll uh, okay. I'll just do that. I'll just post. I'll Please post the link in the chat. Thank you very much. I mean, uh, you know, it would be really nice for people to you know to to go to the to go to the link, create a profile, and look for opportunities to do that. So, thank you very much, uh, Ms. Costa, for for sharing your comments and also on the internship piece and as well as the the job fair and job market. So uh, that. was where we uh, where we started off where we said that we would have a panel we have a guest speaker um so a lot of conversation in terms of what the possibilities are what can be done and you know uh, what should be done wali cheez hai uh, again i think more responsibility is going to be on you to create that opportunity for yourself so with that i would uh, you know like to request talib kareem saab who's with us he's the president of iobm uh, talib saab if you can please uh, share your thoughts and then we will close this session for today ji talib saab over to you the yeah, assalam alaikum and uh, good evening i think we already uh, almost 2 hours into the session so i'll just take 2 uh, to 3 minutes to uh, thank everyone uh, it's good to see uh, Uh, some of our uh, alumni the panel and uh, uh, i think it's uh, really uh, especially for me uh, it's really heartening uh, to see them doing so well in the corporate world uh, whether they're successful entrepreneurs or uh, they are uh, doing so well in the corporate uh, sector uh, So I think uh, I agree with most of the panelists, with Ahmed and others, that yes, uh, there are challenges, and I think we need to create opportunities. Uh, uh, and if we don't do that, then uh, we lose. Uh, you know, being in the education sector, uh, we faced uh, those challenges in late February, and when we were asked to shut down and not allow students to come to the campus. Uh, so uh, uh, the challenge in front of us. Uh, was either to adapt uh, or to save the semester, uh, go online, or uh, just forget about it and wait for uh, uh, the uh, the pandemic to be over. And uh, so we took the challenge and we said, no, uh, we'll try to save the semester. We'll try to save uh, uh, those students who are about to graduate and not delay the graduation. Uh, so uh, i think our uh, faculty members our rector and others uh, and especially our technology uh, department i think took that challenge and it, it decided to conduct online classes and uh, uh, i think uh, uh, those universities who were able to do that uh, i think came out as winners and uh, uh, you know were able to successfully complete the semester and now uh, For example, like us, we have started our summer semester, and interestingly, uh, our uh, one fear was that whether students will be able to uh, adapt. Uh, so I think uh, one good thing is that the new generation, the youngsters, who are born with uh, smartphones in their hands, uh, I think they are much, much more smarter than us, uh, the oldies, uh, the 
baby boomers and uh, the old generation. And uh, so, you know, one result was that uh, this summer, when we started this summer, we, we were a bit apprehensive whether students will uh, enroll after going through a very grueling uh, spring semester. Uh, but this uh, uh, summer, uh, I think we had over 400 more registration than last summer. So we showed that, uh, you know, uh, the students are also adapting to this technology. Uh, although we made it very clear to the students that if you're not comfortable with uh, online teaching, wait for the fall, let things get to back to normal, and then you can, can come back to conventional uh, way of uh, learning. But I think they took the challenge. And I think uh, one advantage we have as uh, teachers uh, uh, is that, uh, you know, we have a very smart audience in front of us, these youngsters and uh, they're uh, ready to take challenges and they're ready to, to take. Uh, so I think uh, COVID-19 has uh, uh, made us uh, change. Uh, uh, it was part of our strategy to, to, uh, to implement uh, blended learning in the next two years. We did this in uh, two weeks. Uh, so, so that was the type of challenge that we had to face. Uh, uh, so we are looking at other challenges. For example, we are looking at our convocation in December uh, as a virtual convocation. We don't see uh, getting uh, 4,000 uh, parents and students together and hold a physical convocation. So these are some of the ideas that you know, we are looking at. We are looking at uh, Kamran uh, is uh, now working on online training, online diploma programs. From January, we are looking at online degree program uh, of our MBA evening program. We are going to take it online. It's going to be uh, not physical, but online program. So I think, as I've said, opportunities are being created uh, and we are uh, working on that. And uh, I think one uh, positive note is that a lot of our alumni uh, like uh, Farhan and Kamran and Asif uh, are working with us uh, in terms of our incubation center, in terms of being mentors for our students. So I think that's how uh, COVID-19 has bring a lot of positivity and has uh, in a way brought uh, our alumni and us together uh, to take these challenges. So thank you very much. Uh, I think uh, as I've said, it was a long session, but very informative, uh, very uh, good session. And I hope that our uh, fresh graduates uh, have gained some confidence that things are not that bad and there are, uh, there are opportunities and, uh, you know, it's not that, that, that uh, there won't be jobs available. Things will start opening up. Things are opening up now. And I think more uh, job opportunities will come up. Thank you very much and uh, all the best to all of you. Thank you very much, Talisa. Thank you very much for that. And uh, that with that brings us to an end for, of the session today. So thank you very much once again to, uh, to Emma Dalizia for the opening dialogue, for our panelists, Maliha Murtaza, Kamran Siddiqui, Sohail Zindani, and Asif Jafri, and also to our guest speaker, Ms. Uh, Koster Said from IOBM, and Talib Saab, of course, for giving us the, our closing remarks. So with that, thank you very much for joining us. It was, it was uh, wonderful Parman, having you I, all. Can I say something uh, just before we go back? Media. Uh, uh, I just Did want you. to say uh, one thing that, uh, you know, uh, normal times we are seeing that we have our majors and our big dream organization, hai, Unilever, PNGs and, you know, Googles and Facebooks of the world. So we are waiting for that organization to compromise. Nahi so my suggestion to all of you is wherever you get an opportunity to work with someone, don't stay back at home. You know, don't wait for those golden opportunities to knock at your door. Start working because whenever you're working, right, you're learning something and you're part of some progress. And because these are very difficult times, there are different times, I would say. So there are different kinds of opportunities, learning opportunities will, you know, pop up to you. So, you know, if there's a compromise required there, go for that compromise, start learning rather than waiting that I golden opportunity. Last point in my presentation is that demand is always for the best, right? 
So the opportunity out there is global opportunity now because uh, you know all big companies are looking to hire people online. They want people to work from home, so that's an opportunity for you. But in order to compete, you know you have to you know be the best. Till the time you search for look for a new job, there are ample portals, ample information available. And in fact, as Farhan mentioned, that you know for the IUBM graduates, there are on the, there there are a lot of pre courses on Coursera. So you know, don't waste time. Don't don't spend your time watching Orto Gold. You know, which have like 500 kind of you know series, and uh, you know you have like forever you can spend on online. You know, you can bench. So don't waste time on that. You know, you I'm not saying don't waste. Don't look for that. Look at as long as if you are frustrated on something and you want to relax. But when you are okay, spend more time on learning. You know, learn new skills, learn what's happening, what are the new ways, you know, things will be done in future. The way things are done now, I'm telling you, things will be very different the way things are done, will be done in future. And look for the organization that are digital in nature, because going forward, it's only digital, digital, and more digital. There's no other way in the world that I see. So look out for, you know, digital education, try to learn new skill sets, you know, which will help you, you know, in future. Uh, so don't waste time, I would say. And if there's a, if there's an opportunity that you know doesn't come from an organization that you really admire to work with and you feel proud about, you know, don't sit back and be a part of that organization, be a part of that learning process. So that's my you know closing note. Thank yes, you, Asif. I think that was that was a very good uh, that was a very good conclusive uh, piece in terms of looking for the right opportunity. So with that, uh, my last message would be, I think, which is the most fundamentally important thing the time for you to adapt means learn to unlearn and then relearn and with that i think i would close the session today thank you very much it is wonderful talking to you thank you once again to all the panelists and everybody have a good evening and good luck with your career thank you very much thank you farhan thank you everyone thank you thank you, thank you everyone thank you so much.